namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa good morning everyone today we are doing our class in a different location in kalambo because i had to a visit to kalambo a sudden visit so there can be some interruptions because it's not the studio of the iit uh, but uh, this is a place that uh, i have done classes before as well so hope everything would go well uh, so far we have discussed about uh, the rupa in various ways uh, and also the eight types of rupas that exist in every kalapa according to the theravada tradition and we also uh, explained about the kalapa how the rupas exist in units and material bodies rupa sarira and also some to a some extent rupa santana as well then we moved on to uh, explain the the life span of a rupa a definition of rupa so uh, mainly then we had few definitions according to the theravada teachings then we moved on to explain the life span of a rupa as mentioned in the uh, mentioned in the theravada tradition uh, then uh, we last week uh, we moved on to explain what are the origin of the causes for the origin of rupa and we found that according to the tradition there are four kamma chitta uttu and ahara uh, and we categorize what are the rupas kalapas and santati means generations of rupas and last week was an explanation about how many types of how do we understand a santati there are three types of santati generations the generation that lasts for throughout an throughout an entire life a generation that lasts to a certain period uh, due to a similar or same cause and then a generation that lasts for us during a certain period of time we we call them in pali adda santati adda pachupanna santati pachupanna and samaya pachupanna so now we move on to uh, the four major causes of origin of rupa they are namely kamma chitta utu and ahara kamma chitta is mind utu is tejo dhatu and ahara is oja nutriment utu is tejo the heat or cold element so this shows that according to buddhist teachings a person's body the physical body of a, of a living being is, is constituted with rupas that have four types of origins it means some of some parts of our rupas are made by past karma some parts are made by the food that we eat some parts are made due to the uh, heat element which exists in outside of the body and also within the within the body and then some part is some rupas are made by the consciousness itself but the abandoned a uh, quantity of rupas is made out of utu so we call uh, rupas that are made out of kamma if you remember we call kamma ja rupa right ja was necessary kamma ja rupas made out of chitta was were called chitta ja rupa made made out of utu were called utu ja and rupas made out of ahara were called ahara ja so this ja part was necessary in order to show these are the causes and these are the rupas that are uh, produced by these causes so now it shows that these are the rupas that exist in our body these are the causes that produce these rupas our body is constituted with constituted with all these four types of rupas now today our focus is we shall be taking few weeks for this our focus is at kamma jarupas the matter born out of karma born out of past karma these rupas are uh, we can call compared to the utu jarupas compared to the uh, these types of rupas utu ja which are abandoned in our body kamma jarupas are lesser but they are they are very vital for our life to sustain in ancient uh, philosophies especially in the western philosophies and also in the sorry eastern philosophies and western philosophy they talked about us uh, something called vitality so vitality is something that 
the ancient philosophers thought that uh, exist within our body which is uh, some sort of a mysterious element maybe it was given by the god or maybe it was produced by the past karma so when the modern science evolved especially the biology uh, they came into a conclusion they 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 ruled out a possible element which is a, which is a, uh, obscure or which is a strange element such as vitality and they tried to explain that everything can be the mechanism can be explained physically within the uh, by the cells we have so this topic of kamaja rupas may not appeal uh, much uh, attraction of a uh, biologist or a person who thinks about or, or a physicalist and also who who uh, thoroughly have studied the mechanism of the body based on cells based on the modern biology so we are talking about uh, according to tradition we are talking about a subtle rupa that supports the entire body for its sustaining for its continuation or for its living according to the teachings these kamaja rupas are uh, plays a huge role in our life and whether conclusion or the decision uh, whether a person is living or dead is based on the fact whether the kamaja rupas are existing in the body or not whether kamaja rupas are existing in the body or not if a ka if kamaja rupas exist we consider the person is still living if kamaja rupas are no more then the person is dead so in the same way in the asian philosophies vitality was considered as something that makes our body to live because we know that uh, physical stuff there are physical stuff without a life but there is this physical stuff there are physical stuff which which has life which so this difference was unable to be explained in terms of normal observation so they thought that there should be some sort of a mysterious element called vitality and they attributed the life the ability of a being to live mainly to this element uh, so if you looking if you look objectively it seems like the theravadians are talking about such a nature which they termed as vitality the other philosophers but or the or english today we we refer it as vitality maybe it was referred in with different words in, in by different philosophers uh, so that vitality is somewhat equal somewhat similar to the kamaja rupas because vitality was necessary for the life to continue and according to theravada teachings kamaja rupas are vital and necessary uh, required for the life to continue that would be the introduction that that's how we should uh, look into these rupas uh, in terms of i think i last time also i mentioned uh, in terms of evolution in terms of evolution uh, important uh, phenomenon according to the uh, theory of uh, evolution is the uh, random mutation is random mutation that the mutation of dna is has happened randomly but according to theravada teaching such mutations if if someone is born with a defect or a uh, normally if someone is born with a defect we attribute that reason for the past karma so instead of having a mu uh, there can be a random mutation even a kondu theravada tradition theravadins would accept that but they some sort of mutations that are very obvious would be attributed to the past karmas so instead of having a entirely physical explanation about the life theravadins bring this mystery i would call it mysterious because it's not easily observable or easily known by the ordinary humans so now if you take this as the human body or a or a living body the biologists who try to explain everything within the body while the theravadins and some other philosophers i i focus on theravadins only theravadins would call there is an effect of something called karma karma is not affecting from outside actually just i just wanted to show that this is a mysterious element according to them karma exists the force of karma exists within the body and the within the mind within these five aggregates it's not something that is stored somewhere else because many people ask the question according to buddhism where the energy of karma is stored 
if there is no such a physical uh, location that we can say it's located here and there outside our body. According to Venerable Janaka Vyansa, the very, very learned Myanmar Seado, uh, in his book, normally the, the Theravada scholars would say uh, the Kama force is stored or Kama force is force would remain, it's better to use the word remaining, would remain or would prevail associated in the mind stream, associated in the mind stream. Uh, the reason is whenever the mind stream stops in a certain body, the Kama force also not is not activated or is not affecting that body anymore. Uh, but uh, this, whenever Janaka Bhyansa has mentioned with regard to Anusaya, we can also apply, apply this into the force of Karma that ex exists within the entire five aggregates, even among the Rupas, that, that existence of Anusaya can be found. It's, it's sort of a sort of a state of the uh, state of the Kilesas that exists in the entire body, uh, entire not body, entire five aggregates, uh, including the rupa. And uh, because according to commentaries, this anusaya is given, is explained as uh, whenever the five aggregates are not thoroughly studied or not thoroughly understood, this anusaya would follow, anusaya would exist. So based on that, he has given a very clear uh, explanation on this. Uh, in one of his books, in Myanmar books, that uh, even among the Rupa Kalapas, this Anusaya, the force of Anusaya, effect of Anusaya can be found. Uh, so likewise, so and he also goes on to explain, in Asanya Sattas, Anusayas can be found uh, associated in the uh, body, the physical body, even the mind is not existing. Uh, therefore, uh, the, uh, the, a similar characteristic can be, uh, can be known with regard to the force of Karma, the Kama Sati. Uh, it also exists uh, within the five aggregates, associated in the five aggregates, that's what we, we normally use, associated in the five aggregates. It cannot be known or seen like a consciousness or a mental factor which has the arising and passing, but it is sort of a potency of producing results. So this karma, uh, now physical, it's, it's not a physical thing, it's sort of, a, it's close, it's subtle, subtler than mentality subtler than mentality, it's a sort of a stage of the uh, mental action, the karma. So though I draw, drew it from outside, please keep in mind the karma force exists within the body, within the life, uh, the body and the mind, you see. So there the karma force exists as a special nature. So this karma is affecting the body. So why I just drew it from outside to show that it's not something physical. It's not something physical. So don't, don't misunderstand that the karma is stored somewhere else in a cloud or somewhere and affecting the body. No, it exists within the five aggregates. But it is an extra element by, by the physical explain the entire mechanism of life based on material or the physical stuff or based on cells or, or the subatomic particles. Uh, Theravadians add a new uh, component called karma, karmic force. Uh, even they, they advocate the consciousness which is not material, which is entirely immaterial, uh, which is denied by the physicalist but, all, but some uh, even western philosophers are going to explain uh, to believe or advocate that there should be something called consciousness. So it is something that is under debate when you look into it objectively. Uh, so the difference between a physicalist and a Theravadians with regard to uh, the existence of the life, we try to understand few dissimilarities. Now, a physicalist would explain it based on only on particles. So, we can call Rupa, Theravadian, instead of having only having Rupa, we add consciousness, Nama, and also forces like Kama, Anusaya, and Asaya and so forth, some other uh, natures which are subtler, which are subtler than the Nama even. So these forces that exist are subtler than Nama. Can be now known with arising and passing, away, but not them. Uh, but we normally say they are a stage of the Nama, a certain kind of a state of Nama. Uh, uh, nama has normally three stages, uh, the latent, uh, the obsession and the uh, uh, transgression stage uh, with regard to the Akusalas. So likewise, it is sort of a latent force. So instead of having only having an explanation of 
based on rupa we add some certain uh, immaterial stuff so that's the introduction that i would like to give for for the kamaja rupas that there are some rupas which are produced by these immaterial stuff that the immaterial force that remains in our in our life is producing some sort of rupas which affect our life so then we move on to explain how what are, what is a karma according to the theravada tradition karma is karma has various explanations karma has been explained differently based on the context normally the very very famous statement about karma is chetana chetana ham dikave karma mala but not all chetana is a, is a mental factor but not all chetanas uh, are considered as karma they can be considered as karma in terms of sahajata uh, karma pachya but uh, here what we are talking is a is a sort of a mentality after they have arisen they have the potency they have the capability of producing results some sort of effect in future so it means after karma has arisen arisen in past way a certain kind of a potency remains in our mind stream and this would give results in future this would give results in future so that's that's why we normally say this is a mysterious sort of a force because we, this, this cannot be verified in terms of uh, experiments this these chetanas now not all chetanas has this capacity not all chetanas have the capacity of producing a result in the future so we normally say uh, a chetana a javana chetana javana chetana javana chetana means some consciousness has an extra force now whatever physical or mental mental physical or verbal act that we do we need some uh, energy of mental energy in order to execute them chittas that have that capacity of produce or uh, executing or producing or causing mental physical and verbal acts are called uh, javana chittas so these chittas have a extra power extra power than other chittas when i say mental acts i was referring to uh, advanced acts such as meditating or thinking or coming into conclusions uh, or investigating such acts mere uh, act of cognition can also be said as a mental act Uh, so in this explanation i i i find or explain uh, following the paramatha deepani there are four types of uh, actions that normally we do the mere cognition which is done by every consciousness then physical verbal and mental acts physical acts are the acts that we do using our body verbal acts are the uh, actions that we do using our words uttering words mental acts are the actions that we do with a higher mental capacity such as meditating thinking investigating and so forth so all these physical verbal and mental acts that are done with the consciousness that has an extra power so the chetana which associates this consciousness it's not chetana is not the consciousness chetana which associates such a consciousness has also has an extra power it also has an extra power then this chetana so these chetanas normally arise in our mind stream for instance if we talk uh if this is a mind stream now javana chetanas may arise time to time normally they arise in cons- uh, uh, groups of seven consciousness together together means one after another so now just i'll, I'll draw it uh, like this so these if these are the powerful consciousness javana javana consciousness these consciousness doesn't have the ability so they have an extra power but not all of these javana consciousness are capable of doing this uh, mysterious uh, effect for that there should be another requirement which is called anusaya the latent defilements anusaya the latent defilements latent defilements do affect our mind stream so as a result this strong javana consciousness the chetanas of these strong consciousness causes a sort of an energy to remain within our mind stream and that energy 
would give a result. So for some chetana, the mental factors to become a karma, to become a karma, it has to be a javana chetana in a mind stream where anusya is not not eradicated. Is not eradicated. In a mind stream where anusya is not eradicated. That is the second requirement. Then there is another requirement which is called Sausaha or Sabhyapara. It has to have effort, sort of an extra, we call extra effort. It is not about the power, the mind itself is involved in the act. The reason is some consciousness are produced by the past karma, we call them vipaka consciousness. In the vipaka consciousness, there is no present exertion. They do have virya in within them, they do have a chetana, but there, some, there, is, there should be some sort of exertion that happens on that moment. Vipaka consciousness, the resultants of the past karmas are produced by the force of the, of the karma itself. So they don't exert extra effort while they are existing. But the Javana consciousness which are happening on that moment, uh, which, are, which, which doesn't have a prior cause like that of Vipakas, do have an extra effort. We call it Vyapara or Iha, uh, Usaha. So this consciousness that have such an extra effort, uh, 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 some some this have such extra effort because among the Javana consciousness there are four which we call Palachittas, the fruition of the supramundane attainments. They are produced by the path consciousness as a result of the path. They don't have that extra exerting exerting quality. They also doesn't have the capacity of giving a result for the future to the future. Therefore, the Javana Chetanas, the Chetanas that associate this powerful consciousness in a mind stream where the Anusya is not eradicated and has an extra effort, so when all uh, has, has an extra effort, are called the karma. Are the karma. To be called something as a karma, it should be a chetana in a powerful consciousness, javana consciousness and that consciousness has to happen in a mind stream where the anusya is not eradicated and also that consciousness should have an extra effort which is called saha chittas. These, so if, if a chetana has all these three characteristics, then when it passes away, it passes away, it, co it, 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 it leaves apart uh, some sort of an energy or a potency which can give results in future. So this is the explanation of karma. Karma. Altogether, there are 19 such karma chetanas. 19 such karma chetanas which has that capacity. Which has that capacity. Out of them, four has the capacity of producing, four has the capacity of producing only nama as results. Now when this result, Chetana Kamma is producing a result, it can produce both Nama and Rupa, both, it can produce both, not only Nama. So out of the 19, 4 can produce only Nama, the remaining 15 can produce both Nama and Rupa, Nama and Rupa. So the Rupa that is produced by this Karma are called Kammaja Rupa. Kamaja Rupa. So that's how we come to the explanation of Karmaja Rupa. Kamaja Rupas are the Rupa that are produced by Karma. What sort of Karma? 15 sort of Chetanas that has the characteristics of associating that arise with a powerful consciousness together with a powerful consciousness or uh, being a, uh, uh, in, a, in a powerful mind moment uh, and also arises in a, in a mind stream where the Anusya is not eradicated and which has that extra effort. So there are 15 types of such chetanas, not the consciousness, chetanas, 
which has the capacity to produce some matter in future. So those matter are called Kamaja Rupas, Kamaja Rupas. Then uh, it's and also something that we have to keep in mind. Now the nature of this Nama and Rupa, we will not focus on Nama much, we will focus on Rupa much today uh, in these lectures. So the nature of these Nama and Rupas are not only decided by the nature of Chetana, based on Chetana, Chetana do arise with some other mental factors, Chetasikas. And it arises with consciousness as well. So nature of these associating consciousness, associating Chetana, do Chetasika, uh, associating Chetasikas and associating consciousness, do affect the nature of Chetana. As a result, uh, Nama Rupas, they are, they are effect of their, their resulting Nama Rupas may also have certain certain special attributes. So therefore it is not only the Chetana which decides the nature of the Kamaj Rupas and the uh, Vipaka Chitta Chit Namas but also uh, the associates, associates of the Chetana as well. Then uh, another fundamental that uh, we should keep in mind is that another fundamental is that now within one life this is the birth, this is the death, Nama and Rupa exist as two streams, one streams. So this is Nama and Rupa. Or not all Rupas are produced by karma only a part. So we have four, we, we should better mention that four streams of na, Rupa are there, four streams of Rupa. But in, in terms of, for the, for the Nama, there is only one stream because no, never two consciousness arise at the same time in the one, in one life. But with regard to Rupas, we have four uh, lineages, four generations. One is produced by karma, one is produced by chitta, one is produced by ahara and one is produced by uttu. So if you take this is the kamaja rupas for example, kamaja rupa, santati, santati is generation, santati is generation. For a, in a one life the kamaja rupas in a certain generations, it seems like it can be said as a fundamental is not is never produced by a karma for example if this is a karma done in this life this nava process karma done in that same life can never produce karma rupas within that life but karma produced karma done within one life can produce vipaka in that same life it's possible in the mind stream karma done in the same life can produce results now, because we know that Kama produces Nama and Rupa both. Rupa is Kamaja Rupa. Nama we call Vipaka, Vipaka, Vipaka Namas. So, a Kama did done as one single in, in, a, in a certain life can produce Vipaka within that life as within that life. Kama is done in previous lives also can produce Vipakas in this life. So mentalities can be produced, resultant mentalities can be produced within that same life the Kama has been done and also in future lives. But with regard to the Rupas, it is very obvious. Now if this is the Kama Rupa stream, it has to be a Karma done in the past. It has to be a Kama done in the past. It cannot be a Karma done in that same life. For example, a Kama done in the past produces Kamaja Rupas in this life. Kamas done in this very life cannot produce Kamaja Rupas within that very life. So that is a very basic fundamental of the Theravadians. So, so far we have discussed uh, some fundamentals. Basic, what, is, what are Kamaja Rupas and what is a Karma? Karma is a, uh, karma is the Chetana uh, arising in a powerful consciousness we, we call Javana. In a mind stream where the Anusara, the latent tendencies, defilements are not eradicated and also uh, a Chetana which has an extra effort. Such a Chetana, volition, when passing away would not entirely vanish, it leaves, leaves away or leaves out 
some sort of a potency that has the capacity to give to produce nama and rupa in the future then the nature of that nama rupa is not only determined by the nature of the chetana but also is associates but also is associates uh, the next fundamental is uh, kamma cannot produce kamma cannot produce kamma rupas within the same life that it has been done but in terms of now the mentalities that are produced by kamma are called vipaka they are called vipaka rupa that is produced by kamma are called kamma rupas vipakas can be produced within that same life but the kamma rupas cannot kamma rupas uh, are cannot cannot be produced within that same life so kamma rupa if so all the kamma rupas in within one life are results of a kamma done in a past life maybe in the immediately past life or whatever uh, or maybe a, a, a life long before this birth but for the vipaka chitrasikas most of the vipaka chitrasikas are, are results of the past karmas but some can be results of the kamma that we do in this very life as well then these uh, right yeah so I, I think I made a mistake so I will be pardon the kamma ja, kammas that uh, yeah, it's, a, it's a huge mistake actually there are all together 29 kamma 29 chetanas not 15 that was a huge mistake I made uh, there's a blunder like uh, about the partisan chittas uh, there are 29 chetanas chetanas Kamma Chetanas, out of them four produce only Nama, then 25 produce Nama and Rupa. It's not 19, sorry for that. So this Nama is called Vipaka, Kamma Rupa is called Kammaja Rupa. Hmm? Kammaja Rupa. So what are these now? Our attention doesn't go into these four because we are talking about Kamma, these are topic. These are topic. So these are the causes of kamma. Twenty-five chetana, chetana or kamas. What are these twenty-five? What are these twenty-five? Uh, yeah. So these twenty-five. This is this is the this is the causes, the karmas. The chetana found in twelve akusala chittas. Chetana found in 12 Akusala Chittas can produce Kamma Jarupas. Chetana found in 8 Mahakusala, which we have not done yet. There are 8 wholesome consciousness, all can produce Kamma Jarupas. Then Chetana in 5 Rupa Vachara Kusalas can produce Kamma Rupas. So out of the 29, we are focusing on 25 because 29 is made out of 4 plus 25. Arupa Vachara, 4 Arupa Vachara Chetana. Arupa Vachara Chetana means it's a higher absorption which gives birth in a life without matter, which leads us to a life without matter, immaterial absorption. So Chetana in these Janas produce only Nama as results. But the other Chetanas can produce Nama and Rupa as results. So therefore our attention goes into these 25. What are these 25? Chetanas in 12 Akusala Chittas, Chetana in 8 Mahakusala Chittas and Chetana in 5 Rupa Vachara Chittas. So these are the uh, Kamma Chetanas. Kamma chetanas that produce rupa that's also very important fundamental then uh, in term now the ones who have studied abhidharma would know that uh, would know that uh, there are all together 33 kamma chetanas 33 kamma chetanas so that that is made out of 25 that can produce nama and rupa Na, uh, uh, that, that, that can produce Kamaj Rupa and Vipaka and then the four Arupa Chetanas. So these 25 can produce 
both nama and rupa nama and rupa means i'm not talking about chitta rupa please keep this in mind all these kama chetanas all these mentalities can produce chitta matter chitta matter means the mind born matter mind born matter is not the, not our topic here we are talking about kama rupas kama rupas are the matter that is produced by a past karma mysteriously produced chitta rupas are produced on that spot on that moment it means like whenever we want to move our body according to our mind, the body moves according to our mind some sort of subtle rupas appear in our body which facilitates this physical movement these are called mind born matter karma born matter is that mysteriously produced one uttu born matter is the material stuff that are produced by tejo the heat or the coldness and ahara born matter is the food uh, matter that is produced by the food that we partake so we are not we are not talking about chitta born matter so even these chittas produce chitta rupa so while someone is meditating in an immaterial jhana lots of rupas arise in within his body these chetanas are capable of producing mind born matter we are talking about kama born matter here we are talking about kama born matter so these 25 chetanas which we elaborated can produce both vipaka chitta chetasika and kamaja rupa kamaja rupa the four immaterial chetanas can produce only vipaka chitta chetasika it's only nama no rupa but there are also four marga chetanas the supra mundane wholesome wholesome chetanas supra mundane which eradicates the defilements they do not produce any vipaka no kamaja rupas they are not producing any uh, sorry they they do produce vipaka sorry i for, forgot that they produce vipaka only nama but not but not kamaja rupas not kamaja rupas so then someone can ask the question why these these two were separated instead of saying four four why can't we just name that at them as eight the difference is the vipakas the mentalities nama produced by these immaterial immaterial chetana this is lokutra supra mundane chetana the difference is these vipakas are capable of giving a rebirth is capable of giving a rebirth but the vipakas or resultant consciousness mentalities produced by supra mundane chetana do not give a rebirth they do not arise at a rebirth that's the difference reason is rebirth is considered as suffering rebirth is a suffering so supra mundane chetana do not ne- just never supports for the arising of rebirth they eradicate the rebirth they they makes us to get rid of the rebirth so that's why we have to separate them and show that they are different uh, they are in different groups right so altogether we have 33 kama chetanas out of 33 only 25 can produce kama rupas the remaining eight cannot the reason is these four chetanas arupa avachara chetanas we call immaterial jana chetanas immaterial jana chetanas it's a, it's a sort of an absorption uh, attained by meditators uh, wishing to get a higher concentration and also to be born in a realm without rupa so these cons- these janas are attained by giving up the attachment to the rupa as long as you are attached to the rupa a person is not able to attain this absorption so we normally say this is a rupa viraga bhavana <laughs> the word rupa viraga bhavana a meditation that is done by detaching from rupa and also at the peak of this meditation when you attain the high absorption you get fully detached from the rupa you don't have any sort of attachment it is suppressed deeply suppressed so as a result this chetana of this jhana is not producing rupa because it is an detachment to the rupa so what does this suggest in order for in order to for material uh, the kamas to produce the vipakas or kamaj rupas attachment plays a huge role which i will i shall discuss 
in a in a in a future lecture uh, when we go uh, before we come into the kamaja rupas in detail this is a phenomenon called phenomenon of craving phenomenon of craving tanha uh, effect in the kamaja rupas so the nature whether uh, kamma is producing any sort of kamaja rupa or not is greatly determined or depends upon the, the the craving that we have so when someone attains the immaterial jhanas the craving for the rupa is greatly subdued so as a result these chetanas do not produce any kamma uh, sorry do not produce any kamaja rupas then the madga bhavanas the madga chetanas supramandane chetanas supramandane chetanas we call this is vipassana it attain through vipassana vipassana is rupa 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 plus arupa viraga bhavana it is a meditation in by which one detached from both nama and rupa in the arupa vajra jana you detach from the rupa only when you practice with asanya satta you detach from nama but in these two samatha meditation we are just suppressing that detachment with the vipassana meditation you suppress them and finally eradicates attachment to towards both nama and rupa so as the uh, vipassana meditation detaches us from nama and rupa these uh, the path consciousness which is the culmination of this practice does not produce any kamaja rupas does not produce any kamaja rupa then one can ask a question it doesn't produce does it produce vipaka chitta chetika yes it does produce vipaka as a result of its power but it's not for the sake of continuation of sansara that's why the kamaja rupas that is just the, their vipaka is just for the bliss for the for the happiness of the of the yogis and also it it sort of a it sort of a good result of the great powerful karma it's not for the extension of the sansara but if you think about the other karmas they do extend the sansara how do something extend the sansara by giving a rebirth because at the moment of death i hope this can be seen at the moment of death nama rupa is supposed to stop but by giving a rebirth it extends the extension happens at the moment of rebirth actually so if a rebirth is given it means the suffering is extended all the karmas other than the supramandan karma has this ability they can extend the sansara then someone can ask the question what about uddhacha chetana yes uddhacha chetana do not give rebirth is not because that it doesn't have that extending nature because it's weak as it is too weak it's unable to give rebirth but its nature of extending is still there but the path consciousness is fully against this extension it stops the sansara therefore uh, even though it produces phala chitta vipaka chitta chetikas which are results of the kama uh, this uh, magga chetana they are not extending the sansara why is that this magga bhavana the path supramandin path is a detaching meditation detachment for rama and rupa both nama and rupa both therefore chetana of immaterial jhanas chetana of magga chittas do not produce kamaja rupas only these chetana in 12 akusala chittas chetana in 8 mahavipak mahakusala chittas chetana in 5 rupa avajara kusala chittas produce the uh, kamaja rupas yeah so this this will be the uh, lecture for today so we discuss few fundamentals uh, the fundamentals such as uh, what is a karma that can produce vipaka chitta chesikas and kamaj rupas we found out three characteristics to be called for something to be called a karma it has to arise with a powerful consciousness javana consciousness it has to arise in a mind stream where the anusya is not eradicated and it also should have that extra effort such chetanas when they pass away Uh, causes some sort of an energy potency to remain within our mind stream within our five aggregates as venerable janaka sadhu suggests janaka advaita sadhus and that force is capable of giving results 
so uh, mysteriously producing nama and rupa the nama produced by mentality is produced by that force is called vipaka the material stuff produced by that those forces those that force is called kamaja rupas then and the nature of these kamaja rupas and vipaka chitta chetikas is not only determined by the nature of chetana but also its associates like such as the ka wisdom that associates it the effort the sadda and so forth then uh, kamaja rupas cannot be produced by a karma kamaja rupas in a certain life cannot be produced by a karma that is done in that same very the same life then according to the abhidhamata sangraha uh, there are 25 chetanas that can produce kamaja rupas leaving out eight kamaja so these all these 33 All these thirty-three fit to be kama because they arise with jarana chitta, extra power. They arise with the, in a mind stream where anusya is existing, and they have that extra effort. Effort. So they all three thirty-three can be called karma, but they do not produce kama jarupas. Why is that? Out of them, the immaterial chetanas ch- of the immaterial jarnas is, is, is the culmination of the practice of detaching from rupa. so as that detachment due to that detachment these chetanas do not produce kamaj rupa they produce only vipaka chitta chetasika then the chetana of the manka consciousness is uh, also does not produce any uh, kamaj rupa that is because part uh, vipassana is a, a practice meditation practice done detaching uh, the developing the detachment towards nama and rupa both they do produce vipaka chitta chetika but not in terms of extending the sansara but as a re- just a result of this karma uh, then uh, yeah and also we discuss uh, this is sort of it is similar to the vitality that has been this, this kamaj rupas are similar to the vitality discussed by ancient philosophers in western and eastern philosophy some sort of simi- sort of similar similarity there but most of the modern biologists would would rule out this possibility because they say the argument is we can explain the entire mechanism with the material stuff that we observe in our in the cells we don't need some sort of an extra force such as mental such as vitality to explain the existence of this so but according to theravadians this subtle rupa produced by karma determines whether the person is a living being is still a being is alive still alive or not as long as the kamaj rupas are remaining in the body subtle rupas a person is still living as long as someone is not uh, kamaj rupas does not exist is no more living yeah this will be the uh, explanation uh, that i would like to give uh, tomorrow we shall move on to explain what the kamaj rupas are and i'll 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 try my best to give you the handout by today night because i'll be traveling uh, even today there is a seminar that i have to attend uh, and also one uh, lunch so i'll try my best to Uh, give the handout by uh, before to tomorrow I, i'll try my best uh, including the funda- four five fundamentals that we discussed today and also the fundamentals to come and then we also hinted that craving so it says when you detach from rupa that karma is not producing kamaj rupa so if you detach from both nama and rupa that karma is not producing kamaj rupa and not producing vipaka that extend the sansara so it shows that it opens the gate for us to think about the phenomenon of craving phenomenon of craving what i mean by phenomenon of craving is uh, the craving plays a huge role about what sort of rupa that we may get uh, in future lives uh, due to our karmas so that's a very nice topic that i will be discussing sooner in the kamaj les kamaj uh, rupa lectures yeah so i conclude the lecture uh, and uh, finally this all shows that according to theravada teachings our life is uh, happens to continue with the support of the karma that we have done in past but it's not everything in our life is determined by karma but a huge role. karma plays, plays a huge role if the karma is not there this life would not continue even we like to continue when we like to live more if the karma is not supporting karma is not energizing or karma is not giving the support to our body our life should end up dead so it shows that this is not a self this is just a uh, cause and effect of you know when it is happening yeah so i would conclude my lecture giving the open the forum for the q and a session yeah 
Okay, thank you, Pante. Saru, Saru, Saru. Um, hello, everyone. If you have any questions, you can raise your hand or you can put your, your question in the chat box. Yes, hi, Pante. Yeah. Um, so I have a, a question. You said that the only past karma can produce karma karma. Right, Pante? Yeah. So, um, but then how can we explain the situation of the Venerable Soraya? change from male to female yeah it's a good question so uh, to the audience if i if i clarify about this question uh, dr ryan is asking about the change of gender which happened uh, in a story mentioned in the literature uh, a, a, a rich merchant called soraya had a lustful thought about uh, one of the arahans great arahans venerable mahaka china he thought that uh, seeing his body because he was taking bath in a river and seeing this attractive body that Soraya had a thought whether uh, it's better that this person becomes my wife or it's, uh, it's that either my wife has such an attractive body that's the, that's the thought that he had as a very lustful thought towards the Arahant and as a result he underwent a, a, a gender change, a change and he turned out to be a female and later on he, he, he took the, he asked for pardon from the Tera and he became again into his normal, he became a male and he later on ordained and became an Arahant. So the question what Dr. Ryan is asking, because I mentioned the Kamaja Rupas in a certain life is produced by, cannot be produced by a Kama that is done in that same life, right? So that is done in the same life. So according to the Theravada teachings, uh, the gender is designed by a rupa called bhava rupa. Bhava rupa designed the gender. So this dhava rupa is twofold, itti bhava rupa and pum bhava rupa, purisa bhava rupa. Right? So only one person have, can have one type of bhava rupas, not the both. So as Soraya, he first had the Ipurisa Bhavarupa and then uh, instead of now, if I draw now in this in his life, he had Purisa Bhavarupa first and then due to his karma, he started to get different Bhavarupa, Itti Bhavarupa, Ido Itti Bhavarupa in blue color, Kum Bhavarupa is in black color. His Bhavarupa is not, we are not talking about the sexual organ, we are talking about the uh, the a subtle rupa that exists within the entire body. It's not about the uh, male or female organ. It, but in those areas, the, the bhava rupa is higher, it, uh, abandoned. But mm, uh, we are, it's not uh, how to say. We are not talking about the specific physical organ. Then this what happened because of his karma, his bhava rupa changed into the pum bhava rupa. He got itti bhava rupa, which is a different uh, process. Then. Uh, Again, he got he became a male due to asking for forgiveness from the Tera. Now the question is: Now we know that uh, one this is a one bhava santati, one bhava santati. In a in a one sort of a method, then we can say there are three santatis. But in last time we decide because the bhava rupa has changed. Sometimes we may consider as one, two, three generations. But ultimately, it is a one generation of Bhava Rupas. The reason is, all these Rupas are produced by the past, same past karma. The force of the past karma are produced by this karma. Karma force exists in even this, this moment. So now, this karma is producing the uh, Kamaja Rupas. So what has happened is, if now this is the karma which produced uh, the Ittiput Pum Bhava Rupa, but due to the, his bad karma, for example, he did a bad akusala karma here. If this is his my mental stream, this is mental stream. He did a akusala karma here. So due, due to this akusala karma, what happens is this akusala karma affects the past karma. Then this karma changes into K1. K1 means its ability reduces, the ability is affected by this Akusala karma. So as a result, what happens? This karma which produced 
male bow rupas due to the sakshada karma produce starts to produce uh, itti bow rupas but the karma has not changed the same karma which is producing new bow rupas due to this effect by the past karma then he took for forgiveness with a kusala chitta that kusala chitta affected the changed karma and then it again became normal so k produced humbhav rupas k1 produced itti bhav rupas again the normalized k produced humbhav rupa so it's the same karma which goes goes uh, front and back goes uh, gets elevated and uh, increased uh, right, like decrease and increased the ability the power capacity uh, so therefore even in such a occasion where the kama rupas have changed according to the theravadians i shall explain about this phenomenon deeply how the gender changes happens male to female and female to male there are two different phenomena according to the sarata dipani sub commentary i shall explain this in detail when we come to the bhava rupas so this is how the theravadians would explain so still the same karma so in within one life uh, the entire bhava process is produced by the same karma even if they undergo a gender change Okay, thank you, Pandey. Saru, Saru, Saru. Yeah, I um, <laughs> no, I I really look forward to that because I remember um, I've heard a lot of um, Sayadaw said that uh, the Kama Charupa is not only produced by one Kama. Yeah, that is that is another true. It's a statement because according to Sakatavato commentary, within one life, within one life. Kama Jarupas are produced by various karmas. So for that, I shall come into that tomorrow most probably. We have to think about Kama Jarupa, Kama Jarupa Sisa. It means Kama Jarupati. Same. Sisa and Santati are same. So there are nine Kama Jarupatis. So argument is there are two opinions of the Theravadian scholars. The accepted argument, accepted means what is mentioned in the commentaries. Nine kamaja samtatis can be produced by various karmas, various karmas. But out of the nine, four uh, has to be four. Uh, just say if you give me one more. Yeah, four has to be. Produced by the kama that give the pati sandhi only, according to Paramatma Dipani. The other streams like the chakku sota gana jiva and bawa, chakku sota gana jiva and bawa streams can be produced by various kamas other than which give the pati sandhi. But uh, the kamas that, uh, uh, but the but the uh, what to? Uh, kaya and uh, what to kaya? One more, I missed. Uh, yeah, bawa. Uh, bawa, according to Lady Sayadaw, can be produced by a different karma, even though it appears at the moment of Patisandi. Uh, uh, it was like Jivita. Uh, Jivita is a controversial thing. I'll leave that apart. So actually, it becomes three. What to? Bawa and sorry, what to? Jivita, uh, uh, Chakku. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, yeah, three. Now it's like this: Chakku, Sota, Gana, Jiva, and Bawa. Five can be produced by uh, various kamas. Uh, Kaya and what to has to be produced by the same karma, uh, which gives the party sandhi. And Jivita, we shall discuss about this point. Jivita is a controversial thing, which can be uh, produced by. Uh, it seems like it produced by the Kamma that gives the Patisandhi. Anyway, we we'll leave that for discussion because Bawa is two, two Bawa quantities, right? Uh, so out of nine, eight can exist in one body. Eight can exist in one body. Uh, so these eight can be produced by various kamas, but the same process. A one kamaja process has to be produced 
is produced only by one karma. That is a very basic fundamental of the Theravada tradition. So they were talking about, when you talk about the all Kama Jirupas, uh, uh, we can have uh, various Kamas can produce different Santatis. But there is another scholarly opinion by very well renowned scholars saying that all Kama Jirupas within one life has to be uh, produced by one, the same Patisandhi Kama. There is another very strong opinion but which doesn't have much support from the commentary explanations. Commentaries thoroughly, strongly recommend that uh, various Kammas can produce various Kamma Jirupas in one life. That is talking about eight types of generations. But one generation is produced by the same karma. I see. But, but is it, okay, so Pante, you said that, so we, if you know that there are nine Kamacha Santati, right? Mm-hmm. And for uh, for one person, for uh, one individual, there are only eight. Yeah. Which means we make a distinction between Bumbawa and Eti. So this is sounds contradictory, say, when we say that it can change, you know, from Bumbawa to Eti. Yeah, it's, it's uh, when, we, when we name like that, as you said, yes, it seems contradictory. But uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> then it should be a different Bawa Santati. Well, yeah, this is how they, they, they have explained this phenomenon. So maybe we have to consider this two as one or <laughs> sub-sectors of the same same sympathy or something. <laughs> yeah, you are correct. If it is a different sympathy, then uh, it has to be a different karma, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, I, I'll look forward to Yeah, that. sure, sure. Thank you, Pandi. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, yes, the next question is, Pindi, um, is it necessary for one to see one's past lives through meditation and see directly the karma that caused rebirths in order to have unshakable faith in karma or cause and effect? Not necessarily, not necessarily. Uh, because when you do the Sukha Vipassana, the Dry Vipassana meditation, you are not, you are not able to see the past life. But uh, by observing the Nama and Rupa within this life, you get into the conclusion or confidence that this life is produced by a past karma. We don't know what sort of karma it is, but we get to know, we understand that it has to be a good karma, but uh, it cannot happen, uh, it could not have happened if there was no past karma. So that understanding can be achieved through dry vipassana even without looking into the past life. Therefore, uh, some shadows suggest that strongly that you have to look into the past life but it's very obvious, very clear within the literature that is not a necessary fact. If you can see, it's, it's something extra. But even if you see, even if you see, the understanding should be that in the past life, Nama Rupa stream existed and a karma was done and that karma causes this Nama Rupa process to continue. It's not the same person did the karma and same person was born. Or it, was, it was not that the, a different person did the karma and a different person, person was born. If someone comes to these ideologies or understanding, it's considered as wrong view. Even if someone has observed this past life and seen the past karma, sometimes there is a possibility that they may come into such wrong conclusions. The vital fact is, the important, the imperative fact is, uh, and he, has to, he or she has to understand that this is a process of Nam and Rupa and that process happens to extend after death, immediately after that it keeps on extending due to past karma. There are uh, ways that we have to contemplate in order to come into that conclusion, uh, uh, into that uh, confidence. So we shall discuss them in the company personal lectures, uh, how someone comes into such a conclusion or a solid confidence without looking into the past lives. Therefore, uh, it's not a, uh, important or it's not a vital or uh, definite factor, necessity factor for someone to come into the uh, confidence of past rebirth and this, especially the cause and effect cycle. Thank you, Pandey Sari Sari Sari. And the next question is, Pandey, um, could Pandi please explain what decides the gender of next life? Uh, mainly the number one is a desire. Desire. Therefore, when uh, Redukar and Chandra Mahatma while explaining the uh, Bhava Rupa, which I shall explain soon, 
mentioned that there are two types of craving, the craving of a male and a craving of a female. That is the most vital. As, 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 as the craving, uh, craving is the main reason for someone to get the gender. And, and also it causes the Nama Rupa, it affects the Nama and Rupa. And when you get the feelings through this Nama and Rupa, we increases our desire to that gender. So normally a female would, uh, turn, no, mostly would end up being a female in samsara, male would end up being male in samsara. Uh, because the desires, the, uh, the likings, uh, attitudes are entirely different. It's entirely different. Uh, that is the main reason. And karma also do play a huge role. In some cases, the dhammata. For instance, uh, think about the final life of a bodhisattva's mother. Having given to the bodhisattva, having given birth to the bodhisattva, it says that he end up being a uh, male in the divine realm. As a, as a, it's not because he likes to be a male, that is the nature of the law. Uh, likewise, we can observe three reasons. Uh, one is the desire, one is the karma, one is the law of law. So I, I shall give you a detailed explanation, two, uh, most probably a two-day explanation about this Bhava Rupa, how uh, a gender change can happen within the same life according to Theravadians and how the gender changes within the samsara and what is the attitude of the Theravadins about this gender. Shall we discuss about this? For the time being, keep, keep in mind, desire plays a huge role, karma plays a huge role, and uh, sometimes, in some cases, like that is of the Bodhisattva's mother, uh, the Dhammata, a law, natural law, also causes this gender change in samsara. But within this life, it is mostly caused by karma. Thank you, Pante Sadhu Sadhu Sadhu. Yeah, I uh, don't see any more questions, Pante. Okay. I think it's time, right? Anything on yeah, time yeah, is up. Yeah, yes, we'll, call, we'll call it a day then. So thank you for listening. And uh, today we discussed about the Kamaj Rupas and the introduction to Kamaj Rupas. And we discussed a few fundamentals. Try to keep them in mind. Tomorrow we shall move into what are these Kamaj Rupas, what are these Kamaj Kalapas, Kamaj Santatis, and if we have time, we may plunge into the phenomenon of craving as well. If we are unable, we may move into the, next, move into the topic next week. How the craving is affecting our Kamaj Rupas in the future lives. Yeah. So wish you all the best and may this merit help us to attain the Nirvana and may the Buddha Sasana sustain for a longer period. And also may the uh, conflicts in the world end up and peace prevail in the entire world. Buddha Sasanam Chiran Tithatu Buddha Sasanam Chiran Tithatu Buddha Sasanam Chiran Tithatu Sadhu Sadhu Sadhu